We recently got a proper dust collection system for our garage workshop and the goal of this video is to hide it in a custom built cabinet. This will require us to devise clever solutions, turn four plywood sheets into beautiful components, slightly reorganize the workshop and fix some errors along the way. It will take a lot of work, so we better get started by loading the first sheet onto the CNC router. As you can see, we already have attached a dust collector to our CNC setup and after making a couple of custom projects for clients, we know it performs quite well. And now we just need to find a proper place for the dust collector in our workshop. Since we didn't want it to be visible when entering the workspace, we decided to build a cabinet for it. One of the cabinet's must-haves is a built-in dust box that would collect all the wood shavings in one place without the need for bags. I have changed them a couple of times and it wasn't the most enjoyable experience. Therefore, I came up with a cabinet design that has two main sections. The top part, where the dust collector motor and the air filters would be located, and a bottom section with an easy to remove dust box. To avoid doing tiling operations while making the parts for the cabinet, we decided to split the wall parts in half. This ensures all the parts fit on the CNC's work surface and we don't have to worry about complicated operations. Speaking of which, we are using 15mm plywood for the cabinet's mainframe components and 9mm sheets for the remaining parts. For both thickness sheets, we are using 3mm bit while cutting all the way through the material. Once the cabinet parts are made, we can move on to the router table to trim the part edges. As for most projects, we are using a 3mm roundover bit for the work and the smaller parts for the project can be easily rounded over. However, trimming the larger components is more challenging. We have to balance the parts on the router table's work surface while keeping an eye on the router bit and how well it's removing the excess material. It would probably be easier to remove the handheld router from the CNC setup and do the operations from the top of the sheets, but the router table is working great as well. Since there are many components, rounding over the edges takes some time. However, once we have all the parts made, we can start assembling the cabinet. So the first task is selecting the parts for the bottom section of the dust collector assembly and installing the bottom frame part into the back panel. This component will ensure the walls won't come apart or couldn't be pushed inward when the cabinet is complete. Attaching the wall components is straightforward and the CNC cut joinery makes it super simple. To ensure the parts won't be coming apart, we are securing them together with a handful of screws. Since the back panel of the assembly is only 9mm thick, we have to pre-drill each screw hole to prevent the screws breaking the plywood. Once the bottom section of the cabinet is assembled, we can move it to the floor and start working on the top cabinet. The assembly follows the same order as before, first adding all the features to the back panel and then attaching the side parts. So the first thing we need is to add the separation shelf, which will allow us to access the dust hose attachment point while keeping the area dust free. The next step is assembling the storage shelf, which is as simple as making the bottom shelf. Once it's assembled, we can attach it to the top panel and join the assembly with the back. Again, to be sure the parts will stay together, we are securing the joints with screws. Before we can attach the side panels to the top cabinet, we need to attach the dust collector to one of the plywood components. This requires us to take apart the collector. After detaching the collection hose and moving the dust collector away from the wall, we can see one of the reasons we need to replace the dust bags with something more durable. The bags can develop small holes through which the dust can be sprayed in the workshop and more the collector is running, the bigger the holes can get. Anyway, for the first steps, we need only the main part of the dust collector, the motor, the impeller and the plastic hopper. So we are removing everything else, starting with the dust bag, air filter and the frame. 
Now we can secure the collector's holding panel to the sawhorse with some clamps and place the dust system inside the cutout. As predicted, due to the screws going through the plastic parts, the collector doesn't fit perfectly. So we need to make some adjustments to the panel and make room for the screws. Therefore, I'm marking the screw locations. Then I can take a drill and carefully remove the plywood where it's needed. Since we don't want to drill through the sheet, I have attached a tape to the drill bit, which helps us to regulate the depth of the holes. When all the screw places are drilled, we need to remove more of the material with a chisel. Now we can test how well the adjustments have worked by inserting the dust collection system in the cutout. This time everything fits nicely and we can secure the collector to the plywood part. In my mind the easiest way to do is by pinning the collector plastic parts directly to the plywood with screws. It might not be the most beautiful approach but it's the fastest one and it works. Once the collector is secured in place we can test with the assembly with the cabinet and it seems we have more problems to deal with. The cutout in the separator wall is not big enough for the dust channel to fit in and the cyclone needs more space as well. We might have avoided these issues if we had made more precise measurements of the dust collector before the CNC operations. But if you don't have a 3D model of the collection system, there is always room for error. Anyway, after making the necessary measurements and markings, we can make the adjustments. To fix the dust channel issue, all we need to do is cut off a bit more of the wall component. After making one of the cuts, I realized we have a jigsaw in the workshop, which makes the cutting easier. To make the room for the cyclone, we have to remove half of the plywood thickness from a small area of the component. For this we are using handheld router with a 6mm compression bit. After less than 10 minutes, we have the necessary adjustments made. Now we can reassemble the parts and take a look how well they fit together. Everything seems to fit beautifully, so we can attach the cabinet sides and secure the assembly with a handful of screws. I'm adding the screws not only for the side panels but also at the back of the cabinet. We don't want to have any gaps between the panels. Everything has to be airtight. After the cabinet is assembled, we need to move it from the workbench to the floor which doesn't leave us with much space in the workshop. So at this point I realized it might be a good idea to reorganize the workshop layout a little bit and place the dust collection cabinet in its intended place. First we have to move the CNC table to the side of the shop and the router table has to be moved from the corner to a temporary location. Now we can place the dust cabinet's bottom section in the workshop's corner but before adding the top section we have to attach these small plywood components to the bottom assembly. These have two purposes. They will help us align the cabinet sections while stacking and overlap the dust box, ensuring all the wood shavings from the collection system don't end up under the cabinet. After the small parts are in place, we can add the top section of the dust cabinet. Before attaching the front cover panel, we need to insert a couple of T-nuts in the component holes. These will help seal the joint between the box and the cabinet. Now we can attach the front panel to the top cabinet, which covers the dust hopper while leaving an opening that will allow us to access the dust pipe connection point. Again, I'm securing the panel in place with screws. This has to be airtight, so the dust don't have any gaps to escape. The project is slowly coming together and one of the last things we need to assemble is the dust box. The CNC joinery makes it super simple. We just need to attach the floor panel to the back component and secure the sides in place. At this point you might have noticed that we are using so-called blind dog bones for the project. They are visible from the outside of the box, however they leave no gaps when looking from the inside which means the dust won't be able to escape. 
Once the sides are secured in place, we can attach the front panel of the box and secure it with a couple of screws. The joint holes in the front panel aren't an accident. We will use them to attach latches that will help us secure the box to the dust cabinet. The idea is super simple. We install one of the holder parts, slide a latch through and attach the second holder component. This assembly allows us to easily slide the latch and the wedge shape at the end will pull the box front panel closer to the cabinet, sealing any gaps. To finish up the front panel assembly, we have to install the handle. Considering the box would be quite heavy once full, we need to secure it in place. We could use glue, however adding screws is a bit faster and easier. Now we have to quickly assemble the wheels that will simplify moving the dust box around the workshop. The assembly is fairly simple. We can secure the wheels on an M8 screw between washers and four components and attach it to the base panel. To ensure the wheel assembly won't be coming apart while using it, I'm adding lock nuts to the axis screw. Once we have all the wheels assembled, we can secure them to the base panels with screws and then we are ready to attach them to the bottom of the dust box. We are using spacers to align the wheels and securing them in place with 4 screws each. This should be sturdy enough to support the dust box, even when it's full of wood shavings. By the way, there are free DXA files for the wheels available on ribabox.com in case you find them useful for some of your projects. Now the box is complete and we can slide it into its position and try out the latch mechanism. It seems the latches are working great, but we still need to seal the top edge of the panel. So I quickly insert the M screws into store knobs and attach them to the cabinet. The store knobs are a great option that won't require wrenches when checking the fullness of the dust box. I was about to attach the doors to the cabinet but I realized that the pegboard wall panels would interfere, so we have to slightly relocate them. To do so, I take off the attachments and remove the panels from the wall. And after making a couple of measurements and markings, I can reattach the panels. This time, I install the pegboard wall horizontally, making it wider. The panels are also a bit higher than previously, which will allow us to slide the workbench under the installation. Anyway, once the pegboard walls are relocated, we can proceed with the dust cabinet doors. To keep things simple, we are using storeboard hinges. Since we made all the pockets and marked the screw holes on the CNC router, attaching them is super simple. And once the fixtures are in place, we can simply pop the doors into position and attach the handle components to both door panels. The last task before shutting the cabinet doors is installing the dust filter. Finally, we can consider the dust cabinet complete and start attaching the dust collection hose and tubes. The thing that worried me the most when making the cabinet was the ability to join the dust collector to the ventilation pipes. But in the end, it was surprisingly simple. I took a small hose piece, which I attached to one of the pipe's angle fittings slid through the hole at the side of the dust cabinet and secure the other end of the hose to the dust collector. Then it was just a matter of attaching the pipe fixtures to the wall and installing the ventilation pipes. When doing so, I attached these DIY blast gates in a couple of places. These will help me to direct airflow to the tools that I'm using at the time. I have shared the 3DXF files for the blast gates on our website in case you want to make them for your workshop. They don't require much material, so you can easily make a couple of them using plywood or MDF offcuts. Now we have the dust collection hose going in two directions. On the right side, they are connecting the CNC router while having a manual cleanup outlet. And on the left side, <laughs> the tubes are going nowhere for now, but we will attach the miter saw and a workbench to the collection system in future projects. So for now, the hose is sealed with the blast gates. Probably the coolest thing about the new setup is the light switch next to the CNC machine that turns on the dust collection system. Since now it's turned on, we have to do some testing 
and see how well it picks up the wood shavings from the CNC work surface. After the CNC operations are complete, the work surface is quite clean and the cleanup hose is also working well. Now we can check the dust box and see how well it has collected the wood dust. It looks like this build has turned out successfully and we are ready for upcoming projects. In the next video we will use some of our plywood offcuts to create a simple jig for the workshop that will come in handy when working on future projects. Until then you can grab 3DX save files for the wheel project and the blast gates on the ribobox.com and make some for your workshop setup. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.